I think people need yeah. more structure than what they think they need. So if they're willing to dedicate that time, it's yeah. so good. To yeah, do. I think right now, I think I actually have a whole four people signed up. Yay! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> so, well, I, so, that leads good. us right into next week's theme, which is I called it the stretch in the strength. And what I wanted to do with that is in, teach people. People don't think of Pilates as a lot of stretching, like the classic Pilates repertoire is a lot of stretching, but there's a lot of stretching in the classic Pilates repertoire. And so I wanted to teach them that, like point those places out and really teach them that if they're working hard and really doing what they should be doing, like they like bringing the legs all the way up and as far up as they can to get those hamstrings on stretch and then lowering down to challenge the abs, for example, that there is both strength and stretch in a lot of these exercises, which is why we don't end Pilates with a whole stretching session you know, like some other sports, you, you do weights and then after you stretch, right? It's separate. In Pilates, we should be strengthening while we're stretching and stretching while we're strengthening. So it gives us a lot of the, you know, the benefits of that are that longer leaner muscle building than bulk muscle building because we're constantly trying to work muscles through the range of motion rather than in a shortened range most of the time, except you know in rehab situations where we shorten the range for protection of the body. Um, and we get um, the benefit of having strength throughout the range of motion or in any functional range of motion that we're gonna have. So it, it's really a nice feature and I think it gets under, um, underappreciated in Pilates or just under, not, not um, underemphasized, but there is so much in there. But the one area that I find, if I was gonna point out where I don't think we get enough stretch in Pilates, it would be quads. Uh, we do get, if we're doing lunge series and things like that, we do get the hip flexors open, but there's, I find that's the one that's the hardest for me to find. You get quad stretching, you do single leg kick, double leg kick, that's where you would get quad stretching, but there's no moment of holding and it's one exercise and I can't really think of another one where we get that same stretch for the quad. Um, and then shoulders, we get a lot of stretching in, uh, you know, lats stretching and shoulder stretching in the cats and things like that. But we don't get a ton of stretching in like, uh, Capsule, capsular stretching, uh, these kind of stretches across aren't really built into Pilates anywhere. The opening chest is a lot in Pilates, but not like, you know, these uh, across body uh, or so even like internal rotation. We don't have thread, like the. Like thread the needle. Is that Pilates? But now I'm forgetting yes, if that's part the of the Pilates. Yeah, 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 yeah. It is. Thread the needle is. But it's, yeah. um, I feel like there's no weight through the arm going in that direction. So it doesn't really, it stretches more of the torso, not so much mm -hmm. just that posterior shoulder, although it is across the body, you're right. But um, so I think those are the few places where maybe if your goal was to really open shoulders in all directions, maybe you take a moment. And if your goal was to open legs in all directions, maybe you take a moment and do quads or do uh, that shoulder stretch, but otherwise it's really ingrained. So I was thinking of going a little bit more back to sort of the classic repertoire and just working through, through slowly and showing them, well, look, we've got stretch here and you've got strengthening here. And here was a great strength exercise where we're also able to stretch. So I want you to extend in this direction on purpose. And if you need support because it's too big a motion for you, then I, you can put the TheraBand over the foot or a strap over the foot, for example, um, if they need help or guidance with how much motion to get or how to get more out of that motion. So breaking things down with like the strap over the foot could be really helpful. Any of those classic like single straight leg stretch. I sometimes like to break that down into the top half. So have them take their legs 
down part way with the strap around one leg and not around the other, and then come up and the strap stays on this leg and then meet again, come up and meet again. So you can do that and meet again, the strapped foot staying still at an angle that's challenging for the abs and the other leg moving up and down. And so you can give them, a, it gives them a little bit more range and a little less stress on the abs so they can focus on the, working that range of motion upward into the hamstring stretch. Uh, you could also work the lower half of that, the down motion of it. Maybe you keep the strap on the down leg, leave the other one up, go down, up. You know, you could play with how that works, but it's kind of a nice way to break it into halves to really understand where the stretch is, where the strength has to happen, what the balance is between the two. Um, so it could be for hamstrings, it could be for abs, it could be for shoulders and things like uh, double leg stretch where the arms are going overhead or um, that's a great place to work on that shoulder opening. We have the whole full molar sequence, right? Mm -hmm. That helps us with strengthening mm -hmm. the core, the rib cage and the upper trunk torso and stretching the arms off of that. So we have those, which, which are really good. Um, trying to think what other ones are really good examples. Even something like sidekick is a great example of strengthening while stretching. Full range, kick forward is a big range. And there's a big range to kick back, right? And you can stretch back as you're kicking back. You can use that as a stretch or you could use it as a power kicking back. Yeah. So lots of, lots of really great ways to go back through the repertoire and tease out where's the stretch, where's the strength and how you can combine, combine them both. So that is where I'm going next week with my... <laughs> I guess the only comment I'd make is that they're not long hold stretches generally. In Pilates is not usually yeah. long hold stretches. Yeah. 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 It's not. Yoga does have longer holding stretches than Pilates. Mm -hmm. um, Pilates is more moving through, but if you go through it enough times and you're slowly increasing the range, yeah. you're going to get, it's, it's the repetitive. It's not fast and sharp. It's just repetitive enough that um, you get more, you get stretched and it becomes enough with enough rep repetition. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It, unless you're snapping fast, like the snap fast has a different purpose actually. And maybe one we should talk about. Um, okay. I'm, I'm often talking about having enough dynamic work back in the body for muscle contraction what the we don't like to do ballistic stretching anymore that that is an old school like you know the whole reach down go reach stretch that whole fast like reach reach, reach right? <laughs> that's the old old um way that we used to think that, that we know that that's not a good idea and most of the time you'll end up injuring somebody that way <coughs> excuse me but there is a place for ballistic stretching, which could be ballistic stretching of muscle fibers. Maybe think of it in terms of little jumping again. So if we go back to little jumping, that is a ballistic stretch of the Achilles, for example, the jumping on the jump board, especially on the feet. It's the landing that actually creates that ballistic stretch. And that is a good strengthening mechanism for people who are going to be doing that in their lives which is pretty much everybody, believe it or not. At some point, somebody's gonna take a fast step, even if they're not runners, right? They'll take a fast step to prevent themselves from falling when they trip, or you know, they'll accidentally go down two steps instead of one, and they'll have that ballistic stretch. So we want them to be able to have enough strength and enough training in the muscles. You need to train muscles to be able to do that. Otherwise, when they get that shock, it's a shock upset and cause trouble or pain. The other place where that happens a lot is in the hamstrings. Right? I know you guys have heard me talking about that. So the top of those hamstrings have some trouble when they're not used to ballistic stretching. And then say you're walking along and you trip and you step, 
and you grab fast with the hamstrings, if they're not ready for that, they can, you can cause yourself a little bit of an injury there. Hamstrings and glutes for stance. So that single straight leg stretch with the pulse pulse and the pulse pulse is actually really good because it puts an unloaded ballistic stretch on the legs. My, so that could be valuable in some ways, that, that ballistic stretch, but not when you're not warmed up when the body's not warmed up and not to an extreme. So we're not trying to like bring your knee all the way to your forehead when you just start doing the exercise and you're not that flexible, right? That's not our goal. Our goal is to have good form, keep the stomach tight, have the legs straight, and then stretch a little into that end range and actually snap up a little and snap down a little so that we get a little bit of that ballisticness to our stretch. So your muscles learn to support that right? So different than standing up and just boom, bending forward. <laughs> that's, that's going to be a tear rather than a little stretch, but we can build, you could potentially build up to that, right? Um, and the younger the body, the easier that is. The older the body, the harder that becomes. So the older the, the muscle fibers just have to be built up more carefully with aging or with overuse. So, um, so yeah, that is where that ballistic stretch can actually be valuable. But otherwise that, that if we're trying to get more length over time, then you wanna sit in the stretches for holding, holding those stretches for a longer time. If, if the, so the research goes, if it's a 20 second hold, then you will not lose muscle length. If it's a 30 second hold, then you start to develop more length. So that's why I'm sure you've heard me talk to clients and say, you need to hold that a minute at least and upwards because by the time they think they've held it for a minute, by the time you get into the stretch and it really starts to, that creep, we call it creep sets in. When the muscles finally start to just release a little bit and get that length a little bit, then you want to hold that range too. So that's what we're, I'm hoping for in that minute and beyond is that we finally get this ah, in the muscles and they start to open up. And I think that's even more true with a muscle that's been damaged. So if it's somebody had a torn muscle and they want to stretch, you have to start really mildly to open that up. And then you could work into a more stretch, but that just takes holding time. You don't want to stretch too much too fast. You want to go nice and slow. Uh, and start stretching really slowly and then open up. Uh, and so that takes two minutes, three minutes in really mild stretch, not painful, mild stretch, and then working to open up. Yeah. So good question. Yeah. But I think you can, go ahead, sorry. Oh, I was just um, sort of different um, stretch, stretch topic, but... <clears throat> I was thinking about the, um, what's that one called? Not knee stretch, but the hinge, the like quad, quad eccentric quad work. Um, that's introducing some length, right? This or is one? that? Knee. This one? That yeah. one that came through, yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah, so that's a really interesting one. I actually did that in class this week on Tuesday. And um, it's a really interesting one because it's length, eccentric lengthening, but it's mm -hmm. causing work. It's a working lengthening contraction. So you are achieving both things. I, I wouldn't call it, it's not an end of range stretch because unless you're so strong, right? But I don't know anybody that's <laughs> going from their back all the way up and back down to their back. <laughs> Oh, don't try it their body <laughs> <laughs> yeah no i'm not there to fix you <laughs> uh, so, i don't know yeah but um so uh, it's it's an interesting one because it's that length it's working the muscle in its extended length at its extended length so what happens if we talk about muscle fibers do you guys have an idea in your brain about that muscle spindle inside the muscle and the fascicles and is this ringing any bells? Yeah, like, something like that. Let me, do you, do you mind if I take a second and pull up a slide here to share with you? There we go. 
So um, I, I always like the pictures because it really helps me understand things if I look mm -hmm. at it and rather than just kind of pretend to have it in my head in some way, shape or form. But this is your skeletal muscle, which is not your heart or not your organs, but everything else pretty much works in the same way. And it's easy to think about here, they have pictured over here, the biceps. So this is kind of a cut through the biceps, supposedly is what they're trying to show here. And what they're showing you is sort of the breakdown. If, if I take this cut and I look straight up at it, that's what I'm looking at here are these little bundles. So there's all these little bundles in the muscle and every little bundle is innervated by a nerve. Uh, and it may be a branch of one nerve or sometimes it's a branch of a few, it's a few little fingerlets of different nerves. So sometimes it's interesting because sometimes some part of that nerve will be uh, disconnected somehow or injured. And so some of these fibers might not fire, but the rest will and so the muscle will continue to function. So sometimes when people have a nerve injury, they get part functioning and part not functioning, which is how they maintain some strength. And then they can work to make these little bundles bigger. That's how we hypertrophy muscles or make them stronger is by making these little bundles bigger and then the muscle itself gets bigger. So that's sort of the most, at the most basic level. And then what we get here, we have these little fascicules, which are just these coverings over and all these little things inside. And then we have the little muscle fibers inside. So with this, uh, you can kind of imagine now, if we take these muscle fibers and we stretch them long, and we stretch them to a much longer length than what they're used to stretching, this one doesn't have the Z lines in it. Okay, um, I don't think I have that on this. No, let me see if I can find you. Oops, the Z line one, because that one's interesting too. But basically, if we take this muscle fiber and we put it at long length, we've made it really inefficient. At its longest length, you're not the strongest. You're going to be the strongest when you're halfway contracted. So with that thigh stretch, I know this is the bicep, not the leg, but with that thigh stretch that um, we were looking at before, uh, you would be somewhere in the mid range, but you're on the long side of that motion. Right, okay, so we have these lines and when we get actin and myosin, those are the chemicals that, that ask for that contraction. And we get these lines here and they come closer together. And as they come closer together, the as the fibers shorten, they come closer together, those Z lines. And that makes our muscle actually more active as a stronger contraction. As they get pulled apart, further and further apart, that contractile force gets less. And so when you're hinging back on your thighs, you're at longer and longer lengths, the further back you go. So the less efficient that contraction is going to be because those Z lines are far apart. So that's kind of what I wanted to explain is that um, as your Z lines get further and further apart, you're gonna end up having um, a more difficult time shortening back. And so that's why people get really sore when they do, um, when they do eccentric work versus concentric work. Eccentric work makes you more sore because those, mm -hmm. their muscle fibers are on more distress or they have more work to do when they're thinned out and lengthened when you're working at the end range. So the other similar thing that you guys would recognize is hamstrings uh, bottom lift. It's a lot harder when you're all the way pressing out or pressing out close to the end or a feet on roller, rolling the roller all the way out. It's a lot harder to contract from there to bend in than it is if you're somewhere in the middle of the range. And it's the same idea. Those muscle fibers are pulled out long. And so it's harder, more work to get that contraction to pull them back in. Whereas if we stay in a shorter range, we're just going in here. And so that's where the muscle belly is strongest. It's thickest and strongest right in that range. When we start having to work all the way out here, it's a lot more work to start initiate that and bring it all back together. So 
long answer to your question, but yes, thigh stretch or any of those is a stretch and a strength work. And that's sort of the ultimate stretch and strength work together. Mm. But it's not as much as a big stretch would be like a relaxed stretch. You can't get as far. Yeah, because that's even, you know, after doing a little of that thigh stretch, obviously not going full range, then stretching at full range, like you don't really feel anything. <laughs> maybe, yeah. Maybe, but I don't ever like actually feel a stretch after that, even when I'm going full range in the stretch, um, which I thought was interesting because it's not like you're working at that full range, but yeah. You're opening and challenging those fibers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So walking, hiking downhill, that's why hiking downhill, we always say, makes you more sore than walking uphill actually does. That because makes you're lengthening your quads. The quads still have to work, but they're at the lengthened position on the way down. You're slowing down the work rather than gripping and climbing up the work. Yeah. Yeah. I also have something that's completely not related, but I just realized I wanted to show you. Okay. My sweatpants that have feet covers. And ah. <laughs> it just reminded me of you. And I was like, I, if I was at the studio, I'd be wearing these all the time. <laughs> Wait, yeah, back be. up. I want to see the full effect. <laughs> yeah, back up. Oh, uh, hang on. Me... Or stand on a chair or something. <laughs> or point the camera down. They have like elastic yeah, on them or just like... Are they gathered? They're, um, oh, it's hard to see. Color. They're footed oh, sweatpants. And you can take the feet off. Oh. 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 Oh my gosh. I want some of those. <laughs> no. Do the feet have rubber on the bottom, like a sticky so you don't slip? They don't. I wish that they did, but um, they're kind of. <laughs> if you have a hot glue gun, you can make little tread yeah 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 that's a good point oh my god Ooh, i have funny. a hot glue gun i just don't have those cool pants 